There's so many great soundbars on the market, which makes it hard to choose the right one for your living room. Hey team, I'm Josh. In this video, we'll dive into four of the most highly recommended soundbars from Samsung, LG, Sonos, and Sennheiser. My aim with this video and sound test file is to help you decide which one interests you the most and then point you towards those individual reviews where I go deeper into each of these soundbars. Those videos will be linked to down below. Let's get to it. The four soundbars are Samsung Q990B, LG S95QR, Sonos Arc, and Sennheiser Ambio. The Samsung Q990B retails for $1,800, but often comes down to $1,400, which includes the main bar, side firing sub, and two rear speakers combined to make an 11.1.4 channeled system. The LG S95QR also retails for $1,800, but comes down to $1,300, and for that price you get the main bar, side firing sub, and two very large rear speakers, totaling a 9.1.5 channel system. The Sonos setup is made of three components. The Arc comes in at $900, the Gen 3 Sub at $750, and a pair of Sonos One SLs at $400. On a big sale, you might get 20% off each component. Together, they retail for $2,050 and make a 5.1.2 channel system. And finally, the Sennheiser Ambio retails for $2,500 and is a single absolutely massive soundbar. On sale, it'll come down to $2,000. I've also paired it with the Klipsch R120SW 12 inch subwoofer, which is $600, and that brings the retail price up to $3,100 and makes a 5.1.4 channeled system. Although the Sennheiser Ambio was released in 2019 and the Sonos Arc in 2020, they're still two of the best soundbars in the market at the end of 2022. LG and Samsung released their soundbars in the middle of 2022 as part of their yearly soundbar update. Links to all these products and current pricing will be down in the description. So let's find out what inputs these soundbars are packing. To start off with, they all include an HDMI eARC port, which is used to get Dolby Atmos from a compatible TV. They also include optical ports, or in Sonos's case, an optical to HDMI adapter for connecting to older TVs. Being able to plug in a device such as a gaming console, Blu-ray player, or streaming device into the soundbar directly can be done on the Samsung, LG, and Sennheiser, but not the Sonos. Samsung and LG have two HDMI inputs, whereas the Sennheiser steps that up to three. LG and Sennheiser have a USB port for music playback, whereas Samsung's is only for servicing. Sonos and Sennheiser have a single Ethernet port for those who prefer a wired connection. Sennheiser also has an RCA input for plugging in an analog device such as a turntable. You'll also get a subwoofer out on the Ambio for connecting any wired sub of your choice. Sonos has gone down the more minimalistic route, whereas Sennheiser has given us everything we'd ever want. Samsung and LG offer you the basics, which is plenty for most people. On the front, Samsung, LG, and Sennheiser have LED screens, which give you information about the current status of the soundbar, from volume level to input selected and audio format. Sonos has a single multicolored LED, which lets you know when a command is received. The LED can be turned off in the app for a stealth look. The Ambio is a behemoth. And for that, you'll need a large cabinet, and preferably your TV will be wall-mounted, otherwise the bottom of your screen will be cut off. Sonos not only looks the part, but lets you piece together a system that suits your needs. Want to take it further? Well, let's add a second sub, and fives as rears, for the ultimate setup. Or on the flip side, just purchase the Arc for a more stripped-down system. Just like the Q950A of 2021, Samsung has packed a driver into every part of the Q990B while still keeping a slim look that fits nicely under your TV. On top of that, the rear speakers have three drivers each for sending sound in all directions. LG is the first with a center Atmos driver to give you separation between dialogue. The rear speakers dwarf that of the Samsung and Sonos with the new wedge-shaped design. Samsung and LG supply wall mounting brackets in the box for the main bar, and LG also provides rear speaker brackets, but Samsung doesn't. Sonos and Sennheiser have soundbar brackets as an extra purchase. Placement of these soundbars matter. Either sit them on the cabinet or mount it on the wall beneath your TV with space for the upward firing drivers to operate. It's not recommended that you place any of these soundbars above your TV, as you'll want them at ear level for the best performance. Sennheiser, Samsung, and LG include a soundbar remote in the box, whereas Sonos operates through the S2 app and doesn't have a physical remote. You'll get all the standard controls such as power, volume, input select, and sound mode options. Samsung and LG let you individually change channel levels, and Sennheiser has a button for toggling the 3D surround effects on or off. So what are they like for watching movies? I want to preface the sound quality section by saying that all of these soundbars sound great. 
There's definitely differences between them and personal taste matters, but at the end of the day, you can achieve a pleasing result with any of them. That being said, here's what I think about their movie performance. Let's start with the Ambio. I find it hard when testing these soundbars to think critically about what I'm hearing and not just sit back and be fully involved with what's on TV. That's what I found with this soundbar. The Atmos effects were really convincing. For instance, throughout Top Gun Maverick, I heard planes flying overhead towards the back of the room, which I honestly thought I'd miss with the lack of rear speakers. Voices were super clear, and the separation between on-screen objects stretched much further than the edge of the bar. The sound bar packs a huge punch for all the latest action movies and effectively projects voices while the craziness is going on. Although it's rated to reach as low as 30 hertz by itself, I didn't find it to be that impressive, but adding a sub knocked it out of the park. You don't need to go for a 12 inch, an 8 or 10 would be perfectly fine. I think the lack of rear speakers stops some people considering the Ambio, and I suppose the price tag too. It holds up against other bars with the Atmos performance and gives you cinema quality sound in all aspects. I was thoroughly impressed. There's a reason the Sonos Arc is so popular. It's a great sounding bar for movies that gives you plenty when you need it, but it also has really well defined dialogue when the voice enhancement is turned on. It didn't give me the dynamic range of the Ambia or the power, but it's such a nice sounding bar. I don't really know how to describe it. Instead of trying to extend itself to reach the high frequencies that it knows it can't hit, it'll limit the sound, which results in a pleasing performance. That's not harsh. The overhead sounds are super effective once the true play tuning is completed, and I constantly find myself being immersed in movies. I like to watch movies at higher volumes, and this is one of the few soundbars that I didn't need to keep the remote close, just in case there was an explosion that I found to be too loud. The Samsung is most similar to Sonos when it comes to the sound profile. Its bass is phenomenal and real strong point of the system. It's got plenty of detail, and by that I mean you can hear lots of information within a scene. Dialogue is very forward focused, and it gives you a nice wide soundstage. The Atmos performance is top notch. The three drivers in each of the rear speakers do a great job of filling in behind you to complete the 3D sound field. I was super happy with how well it competed against the other bars for movies. As I discussed in my review, the LG required a lot of tweaking to get sounding right, and there's different settings for movies and music. Check out that video for the settings I used. Once I got it to a place I was happy with, these were the results. Its bass was really pleasing, but not at the same volume of the other systems. If you don't care too much about bass, then this sub would be perfectly fine for you. It's just that I like a lot, and even maxed out, I could have done with a little more. The vocals were excellent, and Atmos effects with those rear speakers were done well. If I had to rank them for movies, I'd go Ambio at the top, then the Arc, closely followed by the Samsung, and I mean closely, and the LG at the bottom. I'm not saying the LG is bad, they're all awesome soundbars for movies, I just find the bass and dynamic range on the other bars to be better. You guys ask me this question a lot. Which soundbar gives you the best Atmos performance? Now the way I figure out the best Atmos is how well can a soundbar captivate and draw me into a movie? All, and I mean all of these soundbars left us feeling like we got our money's worth. We sat back after watching this scene in Top Gun and was like, Psh, you could buy any of these soundbars and after a little bit of tweaking, getting them sounding awesome. It really comes down to the type of content you enjoy and the features you want out of a speaker. It may be hard to find all of these soundbars in a single store to test out for yourself, so I've put together a sound test file where I've recorded all of these soundbars in a single room with high quality microphones to give you an idea of how they sound. I'll leave a link to where you can pick that up down below. This has been one of the biggest videos I've undertaken for the channel. It's taken me many, many hours. Like right now, it's 2.15 in the morning I'm recording this and I'm only halfway through. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. So if you're finding value out of it, can you please click the like button so it can spread to more people? I really appreciate it. Music is very one-sided. I set up the four soundbars next to each other and sat down with my father-in-law Craig to critique each of their performances. We started with the Ambio and soon realized that that was a huge mistake as it set such a high benchmark that the others just can't reach. We both looked over at each other and was like, oh well, we can't unhear that now and we gotta move on to these inferior soundbars. It's not that bad, but you know, the dynamic range is definitely less. I digress. I heard details in songs that I'd never been able to pick up before with any other soundbar, including the Arc, which is my daily driver. It's just such a massive unit with the woofers being taller than the physical size of the other bars. Speaker drivers are all about moving air and the Ambio's drivers do that exceptionally well. 
Listening to the soundbar by itself, I found the bass to be lacking, so I did all of the testing with the sub attached. Everything was well placed, and it didn't try and push any one part of the song so much that it lost detail or became woolly. I was able to hear instruments at different distances from me in a front to back sense, which the other bars weren't able to do as well. As a standalone bar, the other options had a better, deeper low end, but with a 12 inch sub, it was no competition. I had the clip set at 30% and it filled in the lower frequencies really well. I'm a big fan of the Arc's musical capabilities. The sub gives you tight, well-defined bass and plenty of it, but also knows when to back off when not needed. Vocals are well pronounced and much like I discussed in the movie section, it's able to limit those high frequencies to keep giving you a pleasing sound. Sonos lets you set the rear speakers so they only play ambient sounds when listening to music, which is helpful as I found myself going into the settings of the Samsung and LG to turn down the surrounds when switching from movies to music. Samsung does well with detailed music. Being able to hear individual strings being played in an orchestra piece is where it excels. Bass is tight, not as tight as the Sonos or Sennheiser, but pretty close. Vocals are very present and it can stretch them out to give you a wide soundstage. I was happy with the music I played through this bar from electronic to acoustic. The LG isn't as accurate as the other bars and without proper tweaking, it can feel like it's not pushing the sound out of the chassis. Choosing the right sound mode and turning down the overhead speakers made a big difference, but I don't feel like it's as musically capable as the other three bars. Moving on to the smart features. They all have AirPlay and Spotify Connect. Sennheiser, LG and Samsung have Chromecast and Bluetooth, whereas Sonos lacks these options. For Alexa and Google Assistant, works with means they require another device to receive your voice commands, such as an Echo Dot or Google Nest Mini. Being built in means the soundbar has its own microphone and can interface with Google and Amazon directly, which is way more user friendly and eliminates communication issues between devices. And finally, Sonos is the only soundbar that can be built into a whole home audio system by adding other products within the app. All of these soundbars have their own auto tuning capability. Sonos and Sennheiser's implementation is the best as it uses a microphone that records from the listener's position. Sonos's true play tuning is only for Apple devices, where Sennheiser has a physical microphone so anyone can use it. Out of the four brands, the Sonos and Sennheiser apps are my favorite. They're well laid out and scream premium, which is expected at their price tag. I found the Samsung and LG to be more than capable with plenty of options, but found myself waiting longer than I should for them to connect to the bar. The Sennheiser Smart Control app does really well at giving you all the main information on the home screen and in the settings under another tab that is sorted into folders. I was able to figure out where everything was really quickly and it's super intuitive. The Sonos S2 app focuses on the ability to change between products quickly and get to the settings you need. You can easily start music from within the app and same as with the Ambio, it doesn't take long to figure out where everything is. I found the Samsung and LG apps to be perfectly adequate. There's nothing special about them. They give you all the main settings you need to tweak the soundbar, including individual channel levels, which is really handy. This was just a brief overview of the apps, but if you wanna learn more about a specific one, then check out those individual reviews. So where does that leave us? Which soundbar suits your needs and wants the most? The Sennheiser Ambio is a class act. It bridges traditional home theater and soundbars with elegance and functionality, not to mention massive sound, especially with a subwoofer added. If you're after the best sound from a soundbar and can stomach the large price tag, then the Ambio is a solid choice. The 3D sound performance is the best I've heard from a standalone soundbar and pretty close to having actual drivers behind you. This is a speaker designed for a medium to large size room, not a New York City apartment, and requires a large cabinet to suit. All up, I'm very happy to recommend the Ambio for movie and music lovers wanting the best from a soundbar. When buying the Arc, you're jumping into Sonos's large ecosystem of products that lets you take sound further than just the living room. The sub and res are exceptional, and so too is the S2 app. The Arc is great for those wanting to get the soundbar up and running fast, but also sounds great without much tweaking. So long as you've got a good Wi-Fi system, issues with this soundbar aren't very common, and for me, the most I've had to do is just give it a good reboot. Android users aren't as well catered for with the lack of Bluetooth and tuning ability, so if you're in that camp and care about those features, then I'd probably steer you to one of the other options. The Samsung Q990B gives you a very similar performance to the Arc, but at a cheaper price tag and with some features that better suit Android users. It's a great soundbar to pair with a Samsung TV as they're designed to work together. If you can get a unit that doesn't have any rear speaker dropouts, then you're in for a treat. It'll easily fill a large room, but can also cater for apartment living with its slim, low-profile design. And finally, the LG S95QR is a huge improvement over the 2021 version. 
If you don't mind putting in the extra time to get it set up properly into your overall preference, then this soundbar can give you a very pleasing sound, especially for movies. Pairing it with an LG TV is ideal, but not necessary due to the eARC functionality. All up, a great option, especially if you can get it at a sweet discount. I've purchased all of these soundbars to do this video for you guys, and as much as I'd like it, money doesn't grow on trees. I would like to get more soundbars in, but at this point in time, it's just not feasible. Anyway, here's some other soundbars to look at and some honorable mentions. First up, the Sony HDA9. Although not a soundbar, may be a great fit for your room when paired with the SW5 subwoofer. Next up is the Sony A7000, which is a premium soundbar that lets you piece together a system at your own pace and could be a great fit for your Sony TV. I had the Bose 900 in at the start of 2022 and enjoyed its feature set and sound when paired with the base module 700 and surround 700. And finally, the up and coming JBL Bar 1000. It's the successor to the JBL 9.1, which was an awesome soundbar with battery operated rear speakers for the ultimate flexibility and serious bass. The 1000 improves on where the 9.1 left off with the inclusion of app support and other features. Stay tuned for a review coming on that very soon. With that, as I said in the beginning, if you want to learn more about each individual soundbar, then check out this playlist next, which has all of the individual reviews. And do check out the sound test if it interests you. Anyway, that's all from me. See you guys soon.